Hello, and thanks for watching this video on entering bank deposits. So before we get started, let's look at the general setup in Acumatica, just to make sure we have everything set up correctly. So if we look in Acumatica and we look at our banking area, cash accounts, you'll notice we have a couple of different ones. And one of them is our undeposited funds. And another one is our company checking account. So it's important to note that these two work hand in hand for receiving customer checks or credit cards. This is our general cash account. This is the one we reconcile to our bank on a regular basis. And this one supports payment methods of check for accounts payable. Notice it also in our demo site also uses AR, but this is incorrect. You don't want to use this cash account for receiving checks into directly. And the example I always give people is if I receive a few checks in the course of a day and I enter them into the receivables module, I'm not going to want to see these three entries when I reconcile my bank account at the end of the month. Instead, I'm going to want to see one bank deposit. So this is our company checking account. And if we do a lookup, here is our undeposited funds, which is used in accounts receivable only. So let's enter a payment from a customer. And we'll choose a customer. And we'll pick our check payment method. But again, notice our demo company is set up incorrectly. This needs to go into our undeposited funds. So typically what happens, and if you're getting the wrong cash account defaulting here, then if you go into banking under your payment methods, and we look at check, you'll want to make sure that your default is the undeposited funds, not your main checking account. And that is to say, assuming that under cash accounts and your company checking account, that you even allow this. Typically, you don't want to allow this. and You want to turn this off. As I mentioned, you don't want to have individual customer payments coming into your main bank account. It'll be impossible for you to reconcile. So we'll go back. We have our check together. Let's add an invoice that we're paying. So we have the check in front of us and it's going to pay invoice 5550. And we're paying a partial payment of $10,000. So we'll release this. And then we have another payment that's come in today to ABC Studios. For this invoice, fifty-seven seventy-nine, and it's five thousand dollars partial payment. Okay, so we'll enter the check number of this. Now let's make our bank deposit. So we go over to banking, and we select new deposit. The date of the deposit is today. We'll pick our bank account, which is the account we are actually depositing into. And then we'll give it a reference number for the deposit. Now down here, we'll click Add Payment. So what Acumatica does is it looks and sees what clearing accounts can be deposited into this reconcilable bank account. And it found these two. So we can check these off. And notice you can filter. You can filter by a clearing account. If multiple clearing accounts are able to deposit to this, you have that ability. So let's say you have an undeposited funds for your credit cards, and you also have an undeposited funds for your checks. You can filter here. There's only one. And you could also filter by payment method as well. So we'll add and close this. And now just a couple other things that we can do here. Under charges, we have the ability to put a charge in here. Now this might be something along the lines of if we were depositing and settling our credit cards for the day, maybe your credit card company charges you on a daily basis a fee. 
and you could put that fee in here. So if you select uh, your charge, the entry type here is bank fee. And basically what an entry type does is it points back to a GL expense account or an income account, depending upon whether it's a disbursement or a receipt. In this case, it's a disbursement. We can choose a payment method if we need to, but the charge amount, for example, could be $5. Now, if I select this, then $5 comes up and my total amount of the deposit will be less than $5. So in effect, when we post this, we'll also hit this expense account for $5. In this case, it's a check and my bank account doesn't charge me to make check deposits. So I'm gonna take this out. We'll take it off hold and we'll release it. So now a few things happened here. The first is we created a journal transaction and you could see what happened here. So we debited our company checking account to put the money in and then we credited our undeposited funds. So in case it was unclear, when we received our payments over an accounts receivable, we debited those accounts for these amounts. So the balance in that account stays there until you make your deposits, as you can see here. So this is posted, this is all good. The other thing this has done is when we look at our payments, and if you've seen our video on entering customer payments, we alluded to this before, but if we go to the payment itself, and we go to financial details, you'll notice now that this shows that it's been deposited and it's got a deposit number that you can look up later. So it's that easy. So at the end of the video, our contact information is there. Please feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much.